Manji with Janine from Life is a Beach. And while I've been at Monomanzi, I bumped into Maya van Dam and Manfred Suter. And I just found your story so fascinating. I mean, wildlife photographer, translator. So you have to tell me about your journey. How did, how did you find yourself retired and traveling the world? I mean, that's just amazing. <laughs> that's a long planned story because we fell in love with Africa, traveling a lot in Southern Africa and sometimes doing volunteer work in Southern Africa and in Kenya. And every time we traveled with rental cars, we said, we don't want to go home. It's too beautiful. And we would like to go on, but not with the rental car, with our own car. And then we started. Oh my word. Mm -hmm. And what did you do before you decided to do this world traveling and support wildlife and what were you what were you doing beforehand i know you're from switzerland so what is what was the start of the journey what did you do before you started this journey we worked <laughs> both of us and what did you do for work i was a mother of three sons oh my they word adult of course now and I was a teacher and I was a consultant in community development and a traveler because I always worked a little bit and then had long holidays. Of course, of course we'd have a long holiday. And Manfred, what did you do? I was a police officer. My goodness, from yes. police officer to a, until, to a photographer. Until March of this year. Oh my and then I was early retired with 58, so we lost two many people too early so it, we said if we can afford that it we want to go we will take wow we will dream uh, we will uh, live our dream and your dream was to be a photographer no that's my hobby first so it starts always go a little bit more and more and so now, I'm not a professional, but... No. I don't know, I looked at your photos. You're very close to being a, a, a professional, sorry. I have to beg to disagree. <laughs> your photos are amazing. Thank you so much. They are just beautiful. <laughs> and you're a translator now of I wildlife books into German. Yes, it's, it's not really wildlife books, but wildlife has an important role in the books of Tony Park. He's a bestseller author in Australia and here in South Africa. And his novels are always about one issue of um, poaching, a sort of. Can be shark fins, can be pangolins, can be wild dog issues, whatever. So he writes for conservation and it's very, very thrilling. And I loved his books for maybe 20 years. My goodness. And I always read them and listened to them, practice my English, my understanding yeah. of English with that. And then I wanted to download one for Manfred in German and I couldn't find any. So I just write, wrote him and said, why don't you have books in German? I would be interested in, in helping you to get it across, yeah. And so we started about a year ago, one and a half years ago. My goodness. <laughs> Seems like you've been doing this forever. <laughs> <laughs> it is forever because I spend a lot of time translating because it is dark, cold sometimes, yeah. evenings in South Africa. It was a good spending of time. And you were saying last night that you've done 20 trips to South Africa. More than 20, More than 20. I think. We started in 2009 with our first trip. Goodness me. And then sometimes once, one in a year or the once in a year and sometimes more than once. So the best time was four times in one year. Goodness me. That must have been quite something. And you to, photogra to do photography, you do, and you raise money for conservation? Now, yes. The story is that we volunteered with Wildlife Act five or six times in the parks here in KwaZulu Natal, in Zululand, because they do the monitoring for key species, wild dogs, vultures, black rhinos, 
and we volunteered before in other pro wildlife projects and social projects and here it was really like hands-on being on a safari at three o'clock in the morning wow. because the wild dogs are hunting early in the morning in the when morning, the sun yeah. rises only then they are active and wildlife act has the duty to monitor them twice a day when the wild dogs are active. So it was long days and it was very interesting, fascinating, coloring lions, coloring wild dogs. Um, and how do you plan your trip? What is the plan behind the trip when you decide you're going to come out again? What's the plan? Now? Well, from when you started and you first started coming out and you said, okay, I'm going to do four trips to South Africa this year. What's the plan? Just enjoy time. Yes. <laughs> we don't really have plans. For <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> we, don't, we know now when we have what we do the next, day, the next some days. But. but do you know which of the animals are that you want to see and that you want to work with? Or um, is it just a seasonal thing? The wildlife act monitoring, volunteering is, they have their schedule. Okay. International volunteers coming and they, you can choose which project you would like to go to. Our last project was the vulture project in the Drakensberg in Underberg because I translated red earth. Yeah which is about the vultures and the multi-medicine of the traditional people here. Uh, everything very linked in stories. And what's been your favorite experience that you can look back on over the last, I don't know, it looks like 12, 13 years. What's been your favorite memory that you have of your trip? For me, it's sitting at the Zambezi River in a picnic spot yes. where you can um, sleep and which was just quiet, quiet, quiet and beautiful. And then in the morning we saw the tracks of the leopard very close to our car. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and that was your favourite memory? <laughs> no, 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 I think it was in Kenya when we lived in a Maasai, in a Maasai village. So we have we spent some time in that village. In the village, with the yeah. With the, with the Maasai. And also when we went for a drive, the Maasai went with us. Oh, that must have been a really amazing experience. So um, we had a really old Land Rover, what we rented, and that was... Goodness me. But really fantastic. And how long did, they, did you spend in the village? Uh, well, nearly one ten, week, yeah, one week ten or ten days. days. Goodness me! I went with the with the guys to look for the the trackers. No, for the cows. Oh, and really? The herdsmen. To collect some water, <laughs> which was which was very impressive because we sat in a row on a water hole, which was not very clean, obviously. And they, with a cup, they took out the water for drinking. Wow. And they put their really big... Um, Urn on their head? Yes. And then we went home again. I only had a little... little and did it manage to stay on? Like the kids, but it was not. <laughs> <laughs> that was very impressive. I think I'm also always impressed when you see the hardship that they go through. Yes. And they don't complain. They sing and they smile. and they, It's just the way their life is. And did you manage to get up uh, Kilimanjaro or did no. you not? No, we volunteered as well with a fish eagle research. Oh, my so word. We counted fish eagles on all the lakes or on some of the lakes of Kenya, which was also brilliant because we had no idea about birds at that time. And it was like the trigger to learn all about wildlife Goodness me. and birds. <laughs> and you say you're going up to Uganda in January? Yes. That must be quite exciting. Have you been there before? No. What are you hoping to see? Uh, the gorillas. Absolutely. I think those are just a, a key part of a visit to Uganda. And you know, they're also the source of the Nile. 
So Jijinja is, the, is where the source of the Nile begins. So it could be quite an interesting visit for you as well, knowing that mm. that's where the Nile starts. Because I can just imagine you guys are going to trek up the Nile just to see how far it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a dream, I think. We will, be, we, yeah. will have, we will see such a lot of new things, new birds. Two and are you planning to go home before before then, or are you going to stay here and go from here? We don't have a home anymore. Oh, is your home the world? <laughs> our, our, our home it's is our, our bush baby, is wherever our you are. car, which has a cabin. It's a land cruiser with a cabin and yes. it's a rooftop, rooftop tent. That's our home. And I think we, we saw it parked everything. outside earlier. Yes. yes. And we sold everything in Switzerland, but now we... Next week we fly home, today in a week, Yes. for a month, and to go visit the kids, to go visit the kids and the grandchild, and to house sit the house of Oh, okay. <laughs> You're going to do something normal? <laughs> no. We had too long a normal life, so now... But I'm saying for that month, you're going to do something just normal for the month, and then you're coming yes. back to Africa? Yes. And then you're planning on driving up to Uganda? No, we will drive to Mozambique and to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. and come back to Joburg uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of January. Yes. And then we will fly from Joburg to, to Uganda. Uganda. So that's the, the, that's, the, that's the latest plan. That's kind yes. of the most yes. current yes. plan. Yes. And the most important plan of the no planning is we have time. That's we, amazing. Mm -hmm. We have seen all the, nearly all the, the animals of Africa, so we are not in a hurry to see everything in two weeks. Wow. And to drive up to, to Uganda in a short time because we have time. That's amazing. And I'm surprised you're not driving. I would have thought you'd just say, airplanes don't need them, let me, let me drive. Maybe later. You'll change your mind? Yes. Not, not, not <laughs> well, you know, there's just been an Africa rally where they drove from um, Hadebeersport up through Zimbabwe, Malawi, uh, Kenya, and ended up in Kenya. Oh. Um, spent, they left on the 22nd of July, and they um, arrived in Kenya um, a month later. I think it was... They arrived in Kenya on the 22nd of July, but they took a month, and they drove in convoy. You could apply to go with, and you drove with them, and next year they're going to do the same. So I hope to see you on next year, because we're planning on driving with them. Um, they encourage classic cars and motorbikes, and um, it's just... And there was another lady that I interviewed called Julia Alba, and Julia was 80 years old, and her car wasn't much younger. She had a little um, Toyota and he, she took her Toyota to England from South Africa because she wanted to see the Queen for her 80th birthday. But the Queen was too busy to see her. Oh. So she came back to South Africa and was planning her second trip when she passed away. But what an amazing, amazing lady. I did an interview with her, and she was just... I'll send you the interview. Just, she was such a lovely lady, and she drove through Africa. Okay. Yeah. So you see, that's why I thought you would drive. <laughs> we will drive to Uganda, but our way will be like absolutely. Many, it's the many, many roads many. along the way. Yes. That's the plan because yes. you can't just go say, "Okay, we'll catch the Interstate 5 <laughs> and we'll drive up." Yes. There is no way you do that in Africa. In Africa, it's a way of just getting there and knowing that your end point is going to be there for now. Because when you get to Uganda, it could be something different. Mm -hmm. And we you want know? to enjoy that way. Oh, I'm sure you every, can. Every moment. And I bet you have a book full of friends you've met along the way. <laughs> it's, it's stunning how many people and how interesting people you meet. And we spent five weeks in, in a house in um, Ramsgate at the coast because we met people on the campsite in Mkuzi. Oh, my word. We were along, the two of them, the two of us, and they came to say hello in Swiss German. And we didn't know each other. Good heavens. And after some glasses of wine, they, we told them we want to go to see the whales at the sea. And um, when the school holidays are, we don't want these yeah. crowds. So we go to the sea for a month, and they said, OK, we just leave for Switzerland for some month. You can go into our house. 
That's amazing. Well, we well done. We spent five weeks there. And that is just so awesome. Well done. I think that is just quite amazing. <laughs> no, and it's also today I met a guy here and he was in Uganda some, some months ago. And he told, yeah. he told about Uganda and the gorillas and it's always great to meet people and to talk with them. And just to share that adventure, because I think that's what you guys are so good at doing, is sharing your adventure, because people always think they're either too old or they, they can't do it, or maybe next year, and I'm thinking, there's never a next year. With COVID, we learned there's never a next year. It has to be now, and something you want to do and you're passionate about, and you'll find a way. Yes. And I think you guys found a way. And I think here... In such places you find people who are as passionate about wildlife as we are. And here I have to, to add the story about Wildlife Act and Tony Park and the books, because my translation is, I do it for free, I'm volunteering as well, and when we sell them, my benefit of each book goes to Wildlife Act, and when we have talks and photo talks together, that goes to Wildlife Act. Also. Now that is truly heartwarming and we thank you for that <laughs> because I mean I'm African and I appreciate that people overseas realize how much we appreciate our wildlife and without the world we can't do this either because we can't do it alone. So it's great to see other people appreciating wildlife the way you do. Yes and I think that's the point with Wildlife Act because they are doing they're having ambassadors in all the world because all these international paying volunteers come here to help them and spread the world the word in the whole world. Absolutely. And that's what for me makes this organization so special. I, I volunteered with different uh, organizations but the concept of this organization is for me unique and they, they are award winning so I'm very proud to be we, we were some of the first you're your volunteers. own organization I mean you're your own wildlife conservation team yes. I mean how awesome is that how many people can say that and if they want to support you or they want to invite you to stay where do people get hold of you um, we have a website our car is called Bush Baby because we, <laughs> we love bush babies and we here in Bonomans we have lots of bush babies and so our website is called Like Our Car www.bushbaby.info Oh that's awesome and your photography is on there as well isn't it? Yes it's also www.manfredsutter.com Com. .com. Yes. And your photography, I must commend you again. Your photography is amazing. I can't read your translations, unfortunately, because I don't understand German, but I'm very happy to see that somebody is trying to get our books to be read by others who don't speak English. So I must commend you on that. Well done. And I hope I'm a sort of an ambassador with that too, because all the African fans in the German-speaking parts... Um, come here through the books. It's amazing. And hopefully afterwards, in reality, I'm in reality, you, absolutely. bring you their love. And it was so nice to meet you, and I'm really pleased that you came on camera with me and told your story. And I hope that you'll continually send me updates on wherever you are, and snippets and audio, and just keep the story going. Because, I mean, you have to do that. I mean, there's no question about it. You're the most interesting couple I've met on this trip. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yes, let's go on. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is Maya van Dach and Manfred Suter, and I'm Janine Preston from Life is a Beach.